Morning. Morning. Hey, guys. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I just listened to that and have a good sense of been following the tweets, and I think we can probably all weirdly agree that at some level this is a pretty stupid conference, right? Because if you think about it, the thought of having a conference to, like, push the envelope of getting everybody to think about mobile as an important place to do things is ludicrous, right? The, I mean, for anybody to not understand that it's the closest thing to the extension of a human being, right? Like, for anybody to even debate that everything, you know, we're now 20 years into the current state of the internet, right? You know, like, it's been 20 years since Windows 95 came out and normal people, non-nerds, went on the platform. And so we now have the luxury of recognizing that all these things just repeat themselves. Like everybody thinks I've, like, I know some of you know me and some don't, but I, have a, I, I built a, a large wine business mainly on web 1.0 dynamics, right? You know, 1996 e-commerce site, email marketing, banner, Google AdWords, and then social kind of came along, which, you know, for a lot of us we remember was really just called web 2.0 and they just changed the word, right? And so these things came along and then all the dynamics, you know, everyone's like, oh, you're so good at social media. I'm like, right, because it's just like email marketing. It's just like direct mail. It's just like the same thing. Meaning, even this company, which I was an angel investor in, Button, the theory was, we did this for desktop. We're just gonna do it for app culture. It, it's, I'm just curious. I almost wanna turn this into a weird Q&A instead of a talk. I'm just curious if, this is even a worthwhile conversation. Isn't this a complete foregone conclusion? I almost feel like I'm gonna start a conference called Oxygen Con. Oxygen matters. Of course it matters. Like, there is nothing else. Like, like there is no other ecosystem that's gonna matter in the business world. This is where the money's gonna be. This is where the action is. This is the first, second, third. I, I run a 600 person digital social advertising agency right now and you know there's a lot of terminology like the first screen, the second screen. A lot of people refer to this as a second screen because I guess the TV is supposed to be the first screen. Th this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth screen, right? I dropped my phone the other day and my glass cracked and so I wanted to get it changed and Apple said, cool, you can get a change, come to the fucking genius bar. I go, I get there, I'm supposed to get it back in two hours. They said, oh weird, we have to give it to you tomorrow morning. I literally ran home and walked around with my laptop because I couldn't not be connected. Like, like literally everywhere, like outside, took my kids to Central Park holding my laptop laptop because I need to get my text messages in that place. I mean, the thought, the debate that this even needs to be talked about or like there's no conference that addresses this, maybe not in the most narrow sense, but every conference addresses it. Like what do we talk about when we talk about consumer behavior and what people are happening? Everything and only comes from mobile app culture. I don't know. And then the commerce part, um, Maybe I'll just share something that might be interesting. I started a, uh, I, I still own my family wine business. I haven't really been involved with it that much, but recently, in the last year, I've gotten a little bit more involved, and <clears throat> I, uh, I started an Instagram account called Wine Deals. So, real quickly, it'd be awesome if you guys would follow that account. Um, <laughs> and so, Wine Deals is an account that we created mainly to just sell wine at a ridiculously low price and free shipping on bottle number one. There was a lot of innovation in the wine space that followed the Groupon uh, living social model of deal of the day kind of dynamics and I felt that Instagram had an opportunity to become the next arbitrage of that same exact behavior, AKA the same stuff just works everywhere else. You just have to deploy it and make it contextual to the reality of that marketplace. As many of you guys know in Instagram, because of the functionality, people tag their friends all day long in the comments, which creates enormous awareness because Instagram right now is dominating the attention graph, which, oh, by the way, is the only fucking thing that matters always and forever. It's about attention. You reverse engineer it. That's where the money is. That's why all this shit that we'll talk about today is going to work because all our attention is directly transposed in here 24-7, 365, and that's why it's going to work. And then people figure out how to make it work in that environment. So Instagram, which owns the attention graph in a social environment because I can have 1 million Twitter followers and tweet something and 58 things will happen. I can have 150,000 followers on Instagram and 4,000 things will happen. That's attention. That's the shit that matters. 90% of the market cares about width because they're fucking stupid. It's all about depth. That's where you actually make things happen. And so, 
you should check out at Wine Deals because here's what's interesting. As everybody's trying to figure out what's the ROI and how do you make this happen, commerce in mobile is so phenomenal that the execution of Wine Deals right now is such horseshit, it makes me so embarrassed that I'm associated with it, right? Because it's Instagram, you put a fucking picture, you can't link out if you're not running an ad, so literally, you push a picture of a bottle of wine, you give the information, there's a discount code in the fucking post because winelibrary.com's a piece of shit because I haven't paid attention to it in a while. And so you see that, and then the link out is actually in your profile because it's the only way you can link it out. You link it out, it sends you to the current offer. It's a complete disaster show. There's nothing good. The level of friction is so insane, you get like burn on your thumb for even being involved, right? <laughs> Yet, with all that, we sell a fuckload of wine through it. <laughs> because commerce and mobile is a foregone conclusion because commerce happens wherever attention is. And that's what this whole thing is about. That's what it's about. It's as simple as that. The only asset that matters to everybody in this world is broken down in the following order. Number one, you care about your family and the people you love. Number two, you care about money, right? And number three, and this has been the most interesting one, and I'll tell you a story about it that will contextualize my whole thesis on what matters here. Number three is time. Time has become outrageously important to all of us because we live in a 24-7, 365 world now. And so one of the big mistakes in my investment career is I passed on the angel round of Uber. Twice. Which really hurts. Um, and, uh, and the reason I invested in the next round was because my brother AJ took the first Uber in New York City when Travis came and he said, hey, can you guys test this out? So AJ takes the Uber. We're sitting in our office. He takes the Uber. He goes outside. And I'd used Uber in San Francisco at this point, but there was just something about it working out in New York where we have the greatest transportation of all time. And one hundredth of a second before you know, AJ takes the Uber, we're in the office still just jamming on what we had to jam on. And he goes downstairs. And it just clicked to me because it was just so in my face in real life that Uber doesn't sell transportation, Uber sells us time, right? And so the reason all this infrastructure matters in an app culture is it's just seamless. There's less friction. That 130 second matters. Those two seconds matter, right? This is really the most important part of all this. What matters when you start integrating these pumps, these pipes, excuse me, and let these apps speak together is just it brings us value. And it brings us value in the place where it really matters to us, which is time. And time is the asset. It's why I'm so passionate about advertising, because advertising for 60 years has done the opposite. It's taken away time from you, right? You want to read this article, you turn the page, there's a big fucking car ad. That you know, second used to not bother you as much. You wanted to watch Happy Days because you like the fucking Fonz. You're watching it. They stop you. They try to sell you cereal, right? And that, we just got used to that. Then all of a sudden DVR came, right? Now we have ad blocking coming. It's just that game, right? Time is the asset. That is why mobile 100% will win. Let me ask you guys a quick question. Let's just mix it up for a second. Show of hands, by the way, lying is the devil and two, please don't be lazy. Like I fucking hate when I ask show of hands and people head nod. It's super basic, show of hands. Ready? Show of hands, how many people in this room now actually get pissed off when another human being calls them. Raise your hand. Raise it high. Just hold it for a second. People in the front row, I want you to look at what I'm looking at. Just look at this. Just hold it high. 75 to 80% of this room is actually now mad when another human being calls them. And it's based on one thing. Which is, when I asked this question three years ago, this room would have raised their hand at a 10 to 15% clip. I've watched this number explode over the last 36 months. The reason that is, is because you value time so much. You are so angry at your best friend or your mom for calling you because you recognize that person is hitting you up on your time, that they're stealing your time, that you now have technology where they should have texted you or emailed you and you'll get back to them when you've got the time. It is the asset. Everything that will play out amongst this mobile execution app ecosystem is predicated on that, everything. And that is the opportunity at hand. That is why this is gonna work and it's the combination of our disproportionate 
enormous value in time and the fact that this is the place where all of our attention is. One plus one equals three, there's nothing else. Everything else that everybody talks about is just minor details in the scheme of it and what you need to be reverse engineering and thinking about and strategizing in this room for whatever the fuck you want to happen is predicated on those two pillars. Period, end of story, thank you. How much time, two minutes? Five, nice. I'd like to do Q&A because that was really all. Two examples of companies doing it right. In time? Or Snapchat's winning attention, right? Let's talk about Snapchat. Everyone's like, why did Zuck, this is where Zucks is so much smarter than everybody else. He always has, for the last seven years, run his company predicated on attention arbitrage. It's why he bought Instagram when, for fi- after 500 days for a billion dollars. I was like, ooh, he fucking stole it. We all know it right now, right? When he offered three billion for fucking Snapchat, everyone's like, what the fuck? I was like, he's gonna steal this. Could you imagine if we were sitting in a world right this second where Facebook owned Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat? They would literally own the entire ecosystem of attention for the next 10 years and layer Facebook data on top of that attention and literally be the entire advertising industry in 10 years. Like, scary shit. So Snapchat's winning attention. For all the things they're not doing right, for all the things they haven't done yet, they have attention. 120 million fucking people every day live in that fucking thing. You know, and so when everyone's like, what's the business model? What are they you can figure that out eventually, especially when you're raising a gajillion dollars at a $16 billion valuation. So I, I, so I think Snapchat is stunningly winning the attention graph. They literally are the entire They're not MTV for 13 to 22 year olds in this generation. They're the entire cable industry for 13 to 22 year olds. Do you know what a 16 year old girl in Kansas does? She gets home at 5 p.m. and she lays in bed looking at her phone for seven fucking hours. (laughs) Like, like I don't know if, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at people debating things. This is so obvious, this is it. Like, and, and the other thing that's most interesting to me, how about this question? Sorry Robert, I'm giving you only one example because I'm curious about this question. How many people in this room are willing to, right now, instill this device into their body? I mean it, who here, who here with no bullshit, with no bullshit, like I get being scared of cancer and other random shit, who here is truly willing to install a phone, not just raising your hand for shock value, who really right now, if given the option, would instill a phone into their forearm or some other place? Raise your hand, just curious. Actually stand up, do me a favor, I need the visual. Please, seriously, please. And I'm doing this for us as a collective, like let's just, hold on, I mean like, stay for a second, it's good for blood flow, stay for a second Robert. This is interesting as fuck. Like. These are fucking human beings that want to put a fucking phone in their body. <laughs> Thank you, you can sit. And, and here's what's scary. I think for everybody, for everybody that's sitting here, there is nobody that's not confused that at that percentage of this overall room, that is a 100%, a 100% fucking, a 100% indicator that this is, this, this is the beginning of us becoming robots. This is the true extension of our lives. Shut up, Siri. This is the true, this is the true extension of us as human beings. How many people here within every 24 hour period, including when they're sleeping, are always arm's length from their phone? Raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs>